I am really excited this week because this is my first time doing a NES homebrew video. Of course I've done loads for the Game Boy but I've never done one for the NES before and this was super exciting for me. This is actually a test cartridge. It's called Ronyu's Tail and it was sent over to me by Mega Cat Studios and it's being developed by a Brazilian company called Kunji Studio. It's such a good game. This test cartridge here contains the first three worlds and I'll get into all of that a bit later on but first First, this video is brought to you by Bifrost Bridge Studios. They're a transmedia narrative company, which means that they're making a story using a range of different media. They've actually just released a video that explains all of this that will be shown at the Inspiration4 space launch on the 15th of September. So check the link in the description if you want to see that video early, and definitely check out the space launch on the 15th as well. And now let's take a look at Rionu's tale for the NES. Let's get started. So, a brand new NES game. Unfortunately though, like you may know if you've been on the channel for a while, I don't have any of my consoles here, but luckily I went back to visit my parents on the weekend, and while everyone was talking downstairs, I snuck off upstairs to try and look through all of the boxes of stuff that I've got lying up there to try and find my NES in order to make this video. Unfortunately, after about half an hour of looking through everything, I couldn't find the NES anywhere, but what I did find was the Retro Freak, and this cartridge adapter which actually lets you plug NES games into that and then play them on the Retro Freak. So I did manage to get it working thankfully, so let's take a look and see what it's all about. So first of all, this title screen looks absolutely fantastic for the NES. This has to be one of the best looking title screens I've seen for the system with a really nice big sprite, fantastic background music and even some animation on there as well. It features two options, a new game or a password and I will cover what the password does a little bit later on. So let's just press new game and see what this game's all about. It begins with a really brief cutscene where you see the main character accidentally falling into a dungeon. In the dungeon he meets a ghost and is told that he has to solve different puzzles in order to escape, and this is where the game begins. And immediately you're thrown right into the deep end. There's a key somewhere on the screen and there's a locked door so it's kind of obvious what you need to do, but the way the movement in this game works kind of threw me off a little bit right at the start. As you can see I fell straight off the level, so the way this actually works is when you're pressing one of the directions you actually move from one floor tile to the other. It's not really a smooth movement like The Legend of Zelda or something like that. It actually moves based on the tiles. So you press the d-pad once and the character will shift one tile to the right or left. This took me a little bit of getting used to and for the first few tries I did kind of overshoot but it is something that you get used to the more that you play. As you're going through the levels, you kind of build up an idea of what you'll need to do in each stage. It is a very meticulous game, and I mean that in a really good way. It really makes you think about each level before you actually start. So when each level started, I stood for a minute right at the start and kind of planned out what I wanted to do in the stage in order to get to the end. You've got a set amount of lives, and the enemies are one-hit kills in this game. You do get a special ability where you can attack the enemies with a firebolt, which I didn't realise straight away. At first I thought this ability was just for breaking through these walls, but you can actually use it as a long range projectile as well. And the whole game is very thoughtful like this. You have the abilities, but they're all either single use, or in the case of the fireball, you can use that one three times in a stage. A bit later on in the game, you can find certain tiles which regenerate that ability, so you get to use them twice in certain occasions, but for the most part, you only get to use it once in one stage, and the whole thing is really about finding your way through the level and slowly introducing new features as you're going through the game. As you can see, on my second or third time through the levels, I could always do them a lot faster, and it really rewards replayability. Although there is a password feature, I actually really enjoyed playing the game from the start every time, because you kind of get a feel as to what the levels want you to do, and you can get through them faster and faster each time. The graphics and the sound are all absolutely incredible. Like I said, this is my first time playing a NES homebrew game, 
And if the other games on the system are anything like this one, then I really want to get into playing some more NES games in the future, as well as the Game Boy games which I do mainly on this channel. What really surprised me was when I reached the third level and all graphics changed. I wasn't really expecting that, so I presume in the full game, which is going to feature all of those different levels, that there'll actually be other stage themes as well. Throughout the different stages as well, you'll actually get more power-ups that you don't get straight away. There's two other ones in this Kickstarter demo. There's a boot that lets you float in the air for one tile, so you can kind of jump across gaps, either gaps that you create or gaps within the level themselves. And the other one turns you into a ghost, so you can actually pass through the walls for one tile or you can pass in front of or behind of enemies and it's a really really nice mix of mechanics and they all make perfect sense straight away which is what you want from a game like this. It's really pick up and play but it has a very deep concept behind it and I really can't wait to see how they expand on these ideas and what other power-ups they include in the fun game as well. I was really surprised as well to find out that at the end of the third world in this demo there was actually a boss fight which was really cool and the way they pulled it off using the actual power-ups that you use to solve of the puzzles in the main levels I thought was really clever as well. So it just seems like it's going to be a really well put together and a really well thought out game and I'm sure a lot of you watching will really really enjoy it when it comes out. I've been told that the final game is going to feature 43 levels and if the difficulty keeps ramping up the way it does you're definitely in for a really big challenge and a lot of replayability as well. I really really enjoyed the three worlds that this Kickstarter demo has in store. You can actually play the demo right now by checking the link in the description and going to the game's itch.io page. And of course, if you want to check out the Kickstarter, if you liked what you saw here and you want to back it for yourselves, I'll put a link in the description for that as well. And if you pledge on some of the higher tiers over on Kickstarter as well, you can unlock things like a comic book of the game's prologue and even the OST on vinyl. I would love to get into vinyl video game soundtrack collecting as well. I actually stayed up really late the other night looking through loads of video game vinyls and it's really something I want to get into when I get into the new house in a few months time. The Kickstarter's only up until September the 16th so when this video comes out you've only got a few days left in order to get your pledges in and I highly recommend recommend doing it. I've got my pledge in for the full copy and I can't wait to experience the rest of the game and I'm sure a lot of you watching this video will as well. So definitely go and check it out. Thank you so much to Mega Cat Studios for sending over this test cartridge. You have no idea how excited I was to open this box and to be able to play a brand new NES game before it's even released publicly. So just thank you so so much. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, please subscribe and please check out my other homebrew game videos. I've done loads on the original Game Boy like I said and I really love doing these kind of videos and I can't wait to get into more NES games in the future as well. So leave some of your favourite NES homebrew games down in the comments so I know which ones to check out and I will definitely be doing more videos like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, that's it for now, I'll see you all next week for the next video. Goodbye!